Welcome friends to another video about uh, flying a VOR approach. Have you ever been into the cockpit and looked at the primary flight display uh, to see the arc of your route and then flipped this uh, button here to VOR to see something like this. This is actually a, a primary flight display way of looking at a VOR uh, and this is what the tutorial is going to be about. Usually when we plan a flight we are able to plan an arrival and an approach that is an ILS approach. That is the regular kind of approach where we have a beacon on the airport runway that will guide us vertically and horizontally to the airport. For instance, in Europe, if we take the airport of Athens, uh, then you will see that uh, it has an ILS approach. Uh, Athens is right here. If I click on Athens and I go to the charts and go to the approach charts, you will see that we have ILS approaches. Like, for instance, the ILS approach for runway 3L, uh, which looks a little bit like this. You would fly in from a transition point follow uh, a certain uh, route or along waypoints and then intercept uh, the ILS with a frequency here of 110.5 and then hit approach in the airplane and the plane will automatically be guided towards the runway. But in some cases there is no ILS approach available. Let's for instance go to the uh, island of Kitira here. If I click on Kitira and have a look at the charts, then you will see that there is only VOR approaches available. For instance, the VOR Y approach here uh, looks a bit like this. I will come back later on on uh, what is depicted here. Uh, and uh, the idea of this video is to show how you fly a VOR approach. Now, uh, how would we plan a flight to test this? I will take an airport that is nearby, which is Kalamata, and add it to the route as an origin. And then I will take Kitira and add it to the route as the destination. Uh, we would choose then our approach, which is the VOR approach, if I go to the flight and I go to the runway at the destination, let's take runway 2, add it to the route, and uh, select an uh, approach, and I will take the VOR uh, DME Z on runway 2, with a transition at Kitira itself. So that's actually this one. Uh, as you see, if I add this to the route, uh, then we have uh, actually uh, direct line from Kalamata, which is here, Lima Golf Kilo Lima, to Kitira, and there we see this drawing. It shows actually the same uh, path as is depicted on the uh, VOR uh, chart, which is actually this chart, uh, which we will discuss later on. What does VOR stand for? VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Radar. Simply put, on the image, the VOR is a radar system right here, sitting above the runway. And it emits, it emits a signal on this radio frequency, which is 113.8. And what does it tell us? Well, it actually gives an indication of directions. One direction would be pointing up northwards, and that is the zero degrees radial. Note, it has a little deviation from the very perfect north because it points to the magnetic north. Similarly, a radial pointing this direction would be the 90 degrees radial. And you can already guess from the image that we will be interested to track certain radials. If 
we have a look at this one. That's actually the 213 degrees radial as is indicated here. And I will show why we will be interested in this radial in particular to fly the VAR. Let us go into detail of how we will fly the VOR. We will arrive from Kalamata according to about this bearing. When we will arrive above the airport, above the VOR, we will start tracking the 213 degrees radial, this direction. We will do so until we reach a distance of 7 nautical miles, as is depicted here. Once we reach 7 nautical miles, we will take a left turn and we will start tracking the 16 degrees radial. This means that we will actually follow this line. And this will lead us straight to the airport. To fly the VOR, apart from the tracking of the radials, there are some other restrictions we have to respect. One of the things is, we should fly at 140 knots. The second thing is, when we take our turn at a distance of 7 nautical miles from the VOR, as is depicted here, we have to be at an altitude of 3200 feet. We will then take our turn to the left to track the 16 degrees radial, as is also shown here, and at 7 nautical miles from the runway, we have to start descending at a descent rate of 3.10 degrees. To get started with the flight, we are here with our British Airways Airbus 320 fly-by-wire at Kalamata Airport and I have started up uh, the plane from cold and dark. Uh, let's get into the cockpit. Uh, we have set uh, everything except for the flight plan, so let's go to the MCDU. What is important is that we want to have a VOR approach, as can be seen on uh, this chart. This is the VOR uh, Zulu uh, runway 2 approach at uh, Kitira. We will enter this into the flight plan. Let's go to the flight plan, to the destination airport. When we click on the destination airport and select an arrival, we have here the VOR runway 2 Zulu uh, approach. Let's uh, click on it, no star, and insert it. And by this, uh, we have our flight plan of to fly to the Kitira uh, VOR. Now, important is to have a look at the RADNAV page. Uh, at the RADNAV page, usually we would put in here the frequency of the ILS approach, but now we want uh, to have the VOR frequency 130.80. If we have a look at the chart, you will see that the VOR frequency of Kitira is 130.80. Uh, the abbreviation for this VOR is Kilo Tango Hotel. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is Kilo Tango Hotel and the right frequency. You could enter it also by typing Kilo <coughs> Excuse me, Tango Hotel. Click here and you would find the frequency here 113.8 at 67 nautical miles from here. Clicking on it uh, brings up the right frequency for the VOR. So this is uh, about the setup for the airplane. What we can do now is taxi and take off. Uh, we will see you uh, right again during flight, during approach to the Kitira VOR. So here we are in flight. Kitira is in front of us. Uh, we are approaching from the northeast. I'm trying to descend to 4,000 feet which is the altitude we need uh, above uh, 
Itira VOR. Um, remember, we have also to have a speed of maximum 140 at our turn uh, in the south of Kitira. So uh, once we establish 4,000 feet, I will go to um, a lower speed. The magic happens when we flip this button to VOR and switch this to VOR. As you can see here on the primary flight display, uh, this blue line here is the radial that we have set that we need to follow, which has a bearing of 213 degrees. And this arrow shows us that we are heading towards uh, that radial. Uh, that arrow will actually near in as we closer get closer to the VOR. Let me reduce the speed. One hundred and forty, which is the minimum speed of the Airbus. I'll set the flaps to full. You can also already lower the landing gear. Now what you will see that will happen is that this blue line here will get closer as we, as we near uh, VOR and uh, we do not want to overshoot it so uh, we will have to track the 213 uh, bearing and we will do that by hitting on track here and adjust our bearing as we get nearer to the VOR. You can see here that we are still 12 nautical miles out of the VOR. Uh, so once we reach near zero miles probably one mile, I'll adjust our course to follow the 213 radio. The reason that I have set it to track is because we are following the VOR headings and not uh, the north heading. I mean the VOR has a magnetic deviation because it's pointing at a magnetic uh, pole. I bring up the VOR chart. You'll see the situation. We'll try to track the 213 radial, which is actually this blue line. Currently, we are the pink uh, arrow nearing in from the north west to the Kitira VOR. Remember that we have to be. Um, Afterwards, on 3,200 feet, seven miles out of 213 degrees bearing. So we're still seven nautical miles out of the VOR.
can see the airstrip here. That's the actual location of this radar system. The very high frequency omni bearing radar, which is the VOR. So that's the place where we will start heading south according to the 213 blue line here. Soon we will see this arrow get nearer, which means that we are getting closer to the VOR. We have tuned our instruments to the Kitira VOR at a frequency of 113.8. We are approaching the VOR from the north west according to this direction. We can monitor the distance to the VOR in our flight display. Once we reach the VOR, we are going to start tracking the 213 degrees radial, as is indicated here. We are still 4.6, 4.5, 4 4.4 nautical miles away from the VOR. I'm having close eye now on this blue line. I want to see when it gets nearer. That's the moment I will start to track the 213 radial. see the airstrip here below us. And we should already start adapting our tracking course. around 0 0.7 nautical miles. Soon the blue line will get closer. And now we have to go to 213 degrees. We lost the blue line because we are above VOR. We have no signal here, but soon we will have signal again. So I go to 213 degrees and set the altitude to 3200. We monitor our distance from the VOR and when we are at 7 nautical miles from the VOR, we have to be at 3200 feet altitude. It is at this point that we start taking a turn to the left and start tracking the 16 degree uh, radial as is depicted here and also depicted here, which will bring us on this line straight to the runway. Again, at a distance after the turn of 7 nautical miles, we have to start descending at a rate of 3.10 degrees. Make small adjustments. So 
so that the blue line gets to the center. Pushing the plane towards the blue line, but our final course should be 213 degrees, so when the blue line gets near, I'll go to 213 degrees, which is about now. And as you can see, the blue line is right in the middle. Now we'll fly until we get to D7. 7 nautical miles and then we take a turn left to the 0 16 degree course. That's also when we will have to start descending at 3.1 degrees. So we're at 4.1 nautical miles. At 7 nautical miles I'll turn left to a heading of 16 degrees. I can already enter that radial so that we can follow it soon. So I will adapt the course to the 16 degrees radial in the Radnav page. Put 16 as the new course. Right here. So the radial that you see now is the one we want to join after our turn to the left. We are almost 7 nautical miles out of um, the VOR, so soon we will turn left to the 16 degree radial. And that's now. So we make our turn left all the way. 16 degree radial. And again, uh, this blue line should get nearer as we get above and on the 16 degrees radial. Now we have to monitor our distance because we know at 7 nautical miles inbound to the VOR we have to have a descent angle of 3.1 degrees. We are at 7.9 nautical miles. Let me wait. And you can see the runway is coming up here in front of us. 7.6 nautical miles. I will soon adjust our descent angle. 7.4. 7.3, 7.2, at 7, I set my descent angle to minus 3.1 degrees. And push the button to engage that. And now we start our descent to the runway. The final thing that we will have to do is do the manual landing. It's a very short runway track. I can make little adjustments. I see that we are a little bit left from the needle. So I'll set my course a little bit to the right so that the needle gets closer. 2,500. minor adjustments to our tracking heading and that's how you fly the VOR I have to set the altitude of course to the minimum of the runway so that we have a descent slope
and now would it be about time that I disengage the autopilots and do a manual landing. We have just flown successfully our VOR. Full flaps. I just hope that uh, I can break before the end of the runway because it's a really short runway here at Kitira. One thousand. Having my hands already on the reverse thrust. Here we should have a straight line to the runway. Let's check if the landing gear is down. Yes, the landing gear is down. Press to idle. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Reverse thrust, a full brake. So here we are. We just completed our VOR flight. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it or learned something, please give me a thumbs up and see you in the next video for another tutorial or uh, flights.